<laughs> you see me? Yes. What? <laughs> How are you doing? Baby. You good? To everyone that is watching, to everyone that is watching, this is a this is an interview from my very talented friend, colleague, brother, right here. He's got his own book out. It's called He Arts. So if you want to check it out, go check it out. And yeah, this is an interview. I'm not dancing. I am not singing. I am here to support my brother. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. This is crazy because you are interviewing. Well, we are live on your page, but it's my show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because because you're because I'm broke. I'm broke. Yo. <laughs> I don't have money for a new phone. Coronavirus. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> oh Corona. man! All, all right, I'm going to start it the way I normally start it. So let me do this. Neranza kumi showeta imkwenu vitora mina isipose tu and you are watching he art live chat now tonight <laughs> now tonight I am having this interesting and beautiful conversation with a brother of mine a friend a colleague an artist who's phenomenal Denipri Etebu what hey, who's that who's that person who is that who person? is this person <laughs> <laughs> My brother, um, so I see even people I've never seen join a live before. Your Monique, your Noku, you know, you hello, know. Lion King, hello. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Where am I, Bob? No, to go, yo, my baby, to Bob. <laughs> wow. All right. This is going to be fun. Um just tell people who don't know uh fill them in and tell them who you are. Introduce yourself quickly. Oh man. Yeah, I should it should okay. Um hi guys. Even if this is my life, uh <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nipri. I am a I am a dancer, singer, and actor. I claim it, and I am Nigerian. I am 29 years old, and I am in Germany. <laughs> yep. that's it, that's it. Yeah. All right. So, if you were a fruit, if you were a fruit at this very moment, what fruit would you be, and why? At this very moment. Yeah, that describes your feelings, your state of mind, where you are, how you feel at this moment. What fruit would this be, and a why? Banana. A banana. A banana. A banana. <laughs> yes. Why? A banana because because it it, it it it's it's not just straight. It, it's got the edges. It's bent. You know what I mean? It goes. It can go wherever you want it to go, and it's sweet. It's rich of vitamins. You know. <laughs> This this is going south. It's going south so fast. <laughs> a banana. Listen, what kind of is this banana ripe or is it like still green? You know what state is this banana? My banana, my banana is green. Why? <laughs> My banana is green, simply yeah. because because I still have a lot to learn in life, so I still have time to wrap it up. You know what I mean? Beautiful, <laughs> very beautiful, very yep. beautiful. So, um, I'm going to we're gonna play a quick game. Yeah. It's called Peak. <laughs> People are loving the banana. <laughs> um. It's called pick your plate, okay? Okay. And in your plate, I'm going to ask you between A or B. And mm -hmm. then you have to choose whether you want A or you want B. You get yeah. it? Yeah. So pick your plate, number one. Bungee jumping or uh -huh. deep diving? 
Bungee jumping or? Deep sea jive, diving. Deep sea diving? Ooh. Bungee jumping. Because <laughs> the black man can swim? Or he's scared of oh, water? This black man, <laughs> this black man here can swim. <laughs> this black... <laughs> But the pressure, the pressure in the nose, the pressure in the nose and the ears. Mm -mm. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, cooking or cleaning? Both. Or do I have to choose? Nah, you gotta choose. You cooking, cooking or you cleaning? <laughs> you cooking. Yeah. <laughs> PlayStation, PlayStation yeah. with the guys. Or date night with your girl? Oh, date night. Date night. Nice one. A villain or a hero? A villain. A, oh, you are a scar and not a Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one. Last one. This one is going to be a tricky one for you. Uh -huh. Europe or Africa? Africa, bro. Africa. What? Africa. All right. Nice one, man. I think the first, we've broken the ice. Everything is fine. Let's get to it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I want this to be very much a conversation um, where we're just going to speak. I will be reading. Oh, let me just uh, give a side note quickly. To everybody that just tuned in, these conversations are brought to us by He Arts which is my book, a collection of short stories and poetry. Um, you can get your copy on Amazon. You can get your copy on Amazon, the electronic version. And the hard copies, unfortunately, they're only in South Africa at the moment. But we can courier them to you uh, if you inbox me. Anyway, now that we're done with that, let's talk uh, the first day we met. <laughs> let's talk the first day we met. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what will you tell the people because you had your own thoughts about that first day we met uh we were in the lion king yeah lion king and we're it was our yeah it was our first day at lion yeah. king yeah we we all went out to have dinner i think we had we had pizza yeah okay. yeah you can't Lion King, pale, give us better food, not pizza. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know us, so they were still try testing the ground. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but no, we had we had pizza and uh it was it was a funny it was funny because you were sitting there just like observing everything and just like like you the like you are our father or something. You just <laughs> I rocked up there wearing a bow tie, a shirt, yep. you know, jacket. Yep. <laughs> Monique, do you remember? And you and Serge were so extra. I was like, who are these guys? Can they chill though? Can they behave themselves? Can, what's going on here? We'll let you guys have it from the get go. This is what you're going to be working with. There you exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was very beautiful. And, um, I think as we're speaking about that, it's important to start there because that's where our paths met and that's where our paths crossed, you know? We met and we met at the Lion King. But one of the things that connected us beyond the Lion King was just the fact that though we were at the Lion King... <laughs> Monique. <laughs> Monique, we see you! <laughs> though we were at the Lion King, both of us had this mentality of creating and continue to do things outside the yellow tent. So yeah. um, what inspired you to just be so driven to always want to create stuff, even though you were in the yellow tent and were comfortable? You didn't have to create no more. That is true. I didn't have to create anymore. I think it, it, it was just the, the fact that I didn't, I didn't go there to, like, settle. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? I, I, mm. You know, I, I I have a dream. I'm still working on my dream. So that's why I didn't want to because of course Lion King is a good gig, you know. We had a we had a good gig, you know. So <laughs> so you could it could easily be like, Well, it's all right, but no, like we I still wanted to work on my craft. I still wanted to like um 
achieve goals, you know, that I that I had set. And uh yeah, so that was that was and also the passion for what I loved, you know. So do you think the gig for the Lion King came too soon in your life? Or no. do you think it came at a perfect time for it, you? It actually came at the perfect time. Like I wouldn't say perfect because again, nothing is perfect, but it the time the time that it came was it was a good time. You know, it worked. Mm. You know, so mm. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna quit the musical school anyways at that time, so that was the main reason. I was just like, you know what, this is this is this is good because I was gonna quit this musical school, so I can just jump into the the like the most successful musical, like you know. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like you just dropped your school. You took your school bag and you were like, "See me now, see me no more." Peace. <laughs> you, you, I mean, I mean, I was lucky. I was lucky. I mean, I had something to show, you know. So yeah. Mm. Let's talk about. Let's rewind to. The fact that you said in your introduction as well that you are from Nigeria. Um, so how? Let's rewind to a typical day. How much do you still remember of your childhood? How much do you still remember at this moment? And tell me about a typical day growing up, maybe around the age of ten in Nigeria. What would you be doing? Yo, that's a hard one. The age mm. of ten. The funny thing is, I wasn't even counting my age in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't counting, brother. Oh man, by the age of ten, what was I doing? I don't know. Yeah, don't, like it's it's crazy. Life out there is just different, man. Like you know, you know. How much do you still remember though from back when you were still a kid? It depends on. It depends on what we're like talking about, you know. All right, let's maybe zoom into the space of art. So, when you started, uh, how much do you remember about your dancing and what made you, what pulled you to the stage? Oh man, what pulled me to the stage? Oh. I think you know what that 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 question is so like it's kind of easy to answer because like. I never like saw myself on stage. On stage, mm. as a kid, it was just about like having fun. Mm. You know, about having fun and just like doing what we love. Until I, I was like around twelve, thirteen ish. That was that was when I started like I performed for the first time. Um, started skipping school for performance. <clears throat> and, <laughs> yeah. I like how you say um, at that time you didn't think of performance. You didn't associate performance with the stage. It was just a way of being. A, 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 it was just about having fun and expressing yeah. yourself. Yeah. So when did you re, when did you when did the stage become a platform in your head? The stage became a platform in my head. Like I'll say when I when I ran away from home, <laughs> when I ran away from home to perform because mm. my crew, my crew, they were like, Oh, we have this gig, this, um, we have this gig and we, we want you to join us. Yada, yada, yada. And I was just like, I can't go because my mom wouldn't let me. I'm a kid. You know, she wouldn't let me. And she like, yeah. oh, you're not going anywhere. You know, go that's, is not going to give you food. That's is not going to do this. So I just like, <laughs> but I really wanted to go because I love this. You know what I mean? I wanted to get that experience. So what I did was I just, I just left the house. I didn't even tell my mom as a mm. young left the house and went there. And that performance while being there, that show, that was the first time I saw singers like within a like with a, a group of people singing together doing harmonies and stuff like that. That was the very first time I remember that. Like, I was so amazed by that moment. And it's just like, yeah, 
that was when everything just flipped. I was like, I love this shit. Like, mm. fun. Of course, I don't. You, you don't know what you can do with it. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Like I, I love being on like in this light, just performing. Just you know. And how do you think moving from Nigeria to Europe changed your dancing career? What do you think it, that move did for you as a dancer? Uh, first of all, I feel like because that wasn't a, it wasn't the time of like social media, so it you would have never been seen. Exactly, I've never been seen. It's just like so moving here opened my eyes a lot. Like when it comes to when it comes to like different styles in dance. When it comes to like being inspired by other people, you know, and because how we dance back home is different than how people dance here. Mm. It's a big difference, right? So, yeah, and because of that, it's just like, yo, this is it. Cha it changed it in the in a positive way, though. In a positive. Yeah. Way. And how have you kept true, like? being exposed to all these new dances, how have you been able to still keep true to your authentic expression? Because you are still you, right? And how do you still bring in the African fusion in this European space? Oh, man. Um, I will talk about, like, <clears throat> before everything blew up or whatever, like, social media. Yeah. Too, because... Um, um, I'm just a person that I, I always need to have something from everywhere. Mm. I'm never, I'm, I'm hardly satisfied. You know what I mean? Of course, it has its positive and it, 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 it's it negative side. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, the positive thing about it is that I, I don't rest. I'm not resting. So thinking about home, thinking about like my childhood and how people live there, Thinking about like the roots, I, like I, I can't just leave the African side like lying somewhere. I cannot do that. So um, I always try to bring in that juice whenever I dance or choreograph. You know what I mean? Because it, it's yeah. a certain. And uh, so, and also, I need to listen to myself and not try to follow whatever is out there. So this is me, and this is how I do it, and this is how I'm gonna do it. You know? mm. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read um, a piece from my book. It's titled Acts of Love. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read it and then we're going to speak a little bit on this topic, on this uh, conversation that I'm reading. Cool. cool. Once upon a body. Oh, no. Excuse me. Let me start over. Once upon a time. Yes. yes. Once upon a time. An old wise brain from the north asked the young loving heart from the south. A simple question. Hey, young chap, what do you think people will say at your funeral? Startled by the question, yet confident about his response, the young loving heart from the South responded with a small, gentle voice. Well, who knows? I won't be alive to hear them anyway. But mm. if I were to be alive by any possibility that in some way, I can be present to hear what they have to say. I would hope that they would say, thank you. Thank you, exclaimed the wise brain from the north. Yes, said the heart. Thank you, heart. Thank you for living a life that was full of passion, a life that gave us light, hope, and inspired greatness in everyone that crossed paths with you. The old wise brain from the north looked down at the young heart from the south with a warm smile and asked, Do you know what I'm thinking? The young loving heart from the south smiled back at the wise brain and softly whispered, I might not know what you're thinking, but I sure know how you feel because you remember the deeds, but it is I who capture the magic act of love. So this story was inspired by the idea of the brain having a conversation with the heart. 
And so first, I, of all, man, first of all, I miss yeah. I miss this. I miss listening to you just like <laughs> no, for real. That was beautiful, man. Yeah. Thank you, thank That's you. True. I miss that shit. So I wanted to be to ask you about this conversation because as artists, when we create. As much as this story is about the art, the heart, and the, it's a creative and made-up world, but as an artist, whenever we are creating, whenever you're choreographing or acting or singing, there is a conversation, especially when you're creating your own, where your head has its own ideas and your heart has its ideas. What, do you, what, is, which, what is your first instinct? Do you go with the head or, or the heart? <laughs> Do I go with my head or with my heart? Damn. That's a really tricky one. Yeah. That's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. <laughs> like, both works. You know what I mean? Both works. Mm. So it's just like, I do, I do follow. I, fo I follow my, and this is not to sound corny or whatever, I do follow my heart, like my instincts. And because, again, it's also, it, it, it reflects how I feel when I dance. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? So most mm. of the time, like, of course, there are moments that I just follow my head and just like, okay, do this, do this. And it's like, if I follow, if I follow my head, then it's more of like the structure and like how I want to make this happen and blah, blah, blah. But the moment I follow how I feel, sometimes I might not even like the the routine when I see it because I mm. have a bunch of routines on my laptop that I don't, that I don't, I don't post because I'm just like, at that moment, I fucking loved it and it, it felt really good. Sorry that I'm cursing, but it felt really good. <laughs> <laughs> at that moment, <laughs> it felt really good. But then seeing it is like, nah, it's fine. Because mm. that was for me. Mm. Mm. And I, I like that. I yeah. like what you say, that that was for you. How important is it for an artist to know when is the art for themselves and when is the art for the people? How important is that? It's, like, very, very important. Like, I don't, I don't think people really, like, dive deep into that to actually see how much how much of a, of a moment you can create, especially like in the class, right? Sometimes, like when I teach more than like one or two classes, I always do a piece that is personal. Like mm. most of them, I always, because it's just like me giving them a piece of myself, you know what I mean? Mm. Giving a piece of what's happening within me because obviously I'm not this the whole time. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this the whole time. Even if this is what I'm feeling, they're gonna have that as well. So I'm, so yeah, it's important because it's the connection as well. Like art can connect. So why not use art to like dig deep into oneself and then bring it out to connect in person as well. Mm. Mm. So. I mean, I also I like what you also said earlier on when you spoke about how the head is focused on the structure of your performance, yeah. but yeah. then the heart goes with how you're feeling and how the people are feeling. But yeah. every time, if, um, so just going back to a part in the, where the old wise brain is asking a question, he says, um, what do you think people will say at your funeral. So thinking about this idea of the heart and the head, and I mean, none of us are gonna attend our own funerals. You know, we'll be there, our body will be there. <laughs> we'll be just like. Wakanda so, is big. Wakanda forever. <laughs> what, if, if, um, what would you like to leave behind? Like, would you want people to remember you, especially when you're on stage, for what you, how you structured your work or how your work made them feel? How my work made them feel, Baba. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's like, that's a deal breaker right there because like, and it, it's, 
I, I choose that real quick because I, the, like the, the feedback I always get when I teach something that has more depth to it, it's just, it makes me like cry from the inside. You know what I mean? Like it exactly. makes, it warms my heart a lot. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's a different kind of vibe. It's a, it's really different because it's like you're helping someone without knowing. Exactly. Exactly. You know, like you're helping someone without knowing and it's just like, it's refreshing, you know? Like I, I sometimes just sit at home and I get messages from students from a long time ago or whatever. They watch my videos and they go, like when I took your classes like two years ago, I still remember it. It was amazing. Like you're creating memories and you're creating beautiful moments, you know, for, mm. for you, for your, for your fellow mm. human. It's just, that's beautiful, man. Like, mm. yeah. I, I mean, I think you have been one of the people who's very consistent. Your work is always moving. I always tell you, like, I always watch your work and I give you feedback because I always believe in giving people feedback. But I remember one of your most beautiful pieces that I, I made me cry hard was the piece that you did with Joyce. Joyce, yeah. I watched that thing and I cried, you know, like <laughs> I cried. And I will tell you this, I was not crying because the story meant something to me about the abuse, but I was in awe of the talent and I could feel the passion and the talent so much that it just brought all these emotions in me. So how do you, cause to give that, it means it takes away from you. Yeah. One, how do you, how do you fill yourself up after you've given so much of yourself to your people, to your audiences, to your students, even. Can I be honest right now, bro? Mm. This Corona period, this is it. Mm. Mm. This, this is it. Because, like, mm. you, you, you know it is. Uh, performer, artists, we give and give and give and give and give. But we forget ourselves, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So it's, yeah, it's funny you're asking because, like, this period, mm. Oh man, it's been the best for me. For some people, it's like, how can this be? Corona, you gotta go, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But for me, it's like, this is the moment for me to like fill up my tank with everything. Just fill up like things that I normally would give. I just yeah. want to up before I go out there again. You know what I mean? And it's happening and I can feel it. You know? Mm. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to read something again from my book, and then we will have a conversation about it. Yeah, man. Um, it's a story titled uh, Jemberg. Jemberg. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to speak about, uh, I'm just going to read a, a short part from it. It's in page 94 from my book, and then we will discuss a bit about it. Yeah. So it says this. Uh, once upon a time, in my own little fairy tale, it seemed my happily ever after would never come. Yeah. The street became my home as I traveled to and fro, searching for the me I still believed lived somewhere deep inside this temple I called Lerato. Life had been so harsh on me that I failed to see how it was possible that there be a God out there when all seems to be experiencing is pain, hardship, disappointment, and fear. Yeah. Many thought I lived my life like a clown, but it was not me pulling faces, but me crying for help. They walked Whoa. by. <laughs> they walked by and said nothing when they thought I was laughing and making funny noises, just to be funny. They, they got irritated, but still, no one asked, why me? The faces we put on. I was crying, screaming, and hoping you would help me. But I guess my father was right. He, he, he always used to quote the great William Shakespeare, who in one of his famous writings wrote these famous words, all the world a stage, my world. I guess it was his way of saying, the show must go on, and it will, with 
or without you. <laughs> so this writer here uh, starts to speak this is a story of a young lady called Lerato she's an artist she's a performer it's a yeah. made up story she lives in Jamburg not yeah. Hamburg yeah. <laughs> she works in it <laughs> and she works in a tent as well but here she's opening up and she's saying that there's these faces that we put on and yeah. she's speaking about the mask and how people saw her laughing people saw her clowning people saw her performing and some thought it was a performance but it was not her performing she's like no when you saw me doing this i wasn't trying to get you at, i wasn't trying to perform and entertain you i was actually saying wait this is yeah. me please see me see me help me heal me so yeah. as you were speaking about um that when you are teaching you are teaching your classes if you are teaching more than one class you make sure that one of the classes you're going to teach you're going to give them a, as a part of you yeah how do you i think a lot of actors and performers walk around wearing masks and especially when you become a renowned performer like yourself everywhere where you go people already have an expectation of <laughs> this is denipri you know the denipri how do you still How do you how do you save yourself from the mask of the expectation and still be able to bring yourself into the space? Oh, um like me saving myself, like me bringing myself to to the studio to teach is me saving myself. Mm. You know what I mean? So like me going and taking off the mask of trying to be too cool trying to be because I'm a hip hop dancer I got to wear this gear trying to be all of this like sometimes I look like shit in what I want to do this is what I'm going to do and if you if you pay attention you will learn some you will take something away from my class so mm. yeah so me being me in my classes when I teach is just like that's how i save myself from from getting from being fake you know what mm. i mean and then most especially is when i perform when i perform always like try to be a version of myself because obviously we all have different versions of ourselves so uh, like it's going to be a particular part that i'm going okay today i'm trying to i'm I'm going to show a little bit of sadness, a little bit of angry, uh like the anger side of myself. I'm going to show maybe a little bit of the cute side, maybe the happy side, you know, different spectrum. But I'm just going to always make sure I show myself. Of course, there's there's a little bit of show in it, but mm. mixed with myself. Mm. And what would you say um to these lines? It says um all the world is stage. My world. I guess it was his way of saying the show must go on and the show will go on with or without you who what do i say to that um what lessons have you learned about the show having to go on and in moments where though you 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 are part of the show but you also know that the show is bigger than you isn't it Yeah, the, the, like it's yeah, I'm a part of the show, but it's like I'm a I'm a little pi uh, piece in the whole thing. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm mm. this I'm this I'm this guy that is like I fit in the puzzle. But if I'm if I'm not in if I'm not in it, it will still be fine. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So that that is also that is also a way of me to like just be like don't stress yourself. You don't you don't need to stress yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this everything is got everything's going to function anyways because at home I catch myself doing a show for myself. Exactly. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. that is that is my show. <laughs> the show exactly. is even if I'm like, well there's we don't perform anymore, the theater is closed, uh, the dance schools are closed, but I'm I'm at home looking at myself to like eh, eh. 
<laughs> yeah. You know? So it's always it's it's always there. Even as even if you're not an artist, you always you have something to do like clowning around with. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, so how has how has this idea this season of Corona? How has it changed your mindset about performance? And how do you think it's going to change, uh, like performance in terms of big crowds and theaters? How do you see that playing out in the near future? What 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 exactly do you mean, like? So how this time right now? Let's start with maybe this. Let's break it into two questions. The first question being, how what have you learned about your artistry, and what what's new what what um what revelation did you get about your art and yourself due to the season of corona that i'm that i'm i'm super talented yeah this this is I, probably the first time that i'm saying it and i yeah i feel it, I feel it. you're owning it yes <laughs> that i'm saying it out of my mouth and i'm just like yes i am super talented simply because like I didn't. I didn't know I could write, like, poetry and like, or songs, or you know what I mean. I did not know that. But when I tell you, I've written at least at least ten different stuff, at least. You know, so it's just like, wow. It doesn't have to be a number one hit. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't even have to go out. Nothing. For myself, I know that I can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I can do it. And dance wise, I'm always growing. I'm I'm getting smarter because I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you gotta you gotta train you gotta train differently. You gotta dance differently. You gotta know your strength. You know what I mean. So and this this Corona period is just like is giving me the moment of peace. Like mm. because you know. Dinipri, where are you? I'm here. Dinipri, where are you? I'm here. Dinipri, where I'm there? I'm here. I'm coming back to play the show. I'm, you know, yeah. always on the road. But now yeah. it's just like I have to focus on myself. So while focusing yeah. on myself, I'm growing in different, you know, growing different mm. brands. So mm. yeah. And coming out of this season of Corona, how do you think you're going to carry yourself differently in this space? <laughs> um, I told Monique this the other day, actually. Uh, I, I told I told Monique because we're so we talk a lot. So I told her I was like, whatever I'm putting myself into, mm. I'm going in naked. Mm. I'm naked, and if it start if it starts to itch my skin, I'm gonna go out of it. That mm. is simply being honest to myself as a human being and as an artist. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful one. You want to go into the spaces naked and you want to be exposed. You want to come in without any reservation, really purely yourself. And yeah. if you feel that it's not vibing with you, you're also willing to walk away. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Monique. We need that video call, but privately. We're going to have it soon. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to this conversation. So um, I want to speak about letting go because a lot of people, are they are talented, but they are scared to let the world see their ideas. You know, when I uh, recorded my, my album, I was not the best singer that there was where I was at the time, they especially, but I was the most courageous at the time to say, why not? You know, and yeah. a lot of people are afraid to just jump and, and get things done and show off their talent. As you were yeah. saying that you've written songs, you've written stuff and you were not thinking, I want to write the best thing. You were just like, I just want to write. I just want to create. How would, yeah. can you help somebody who's watching this conversation at this moment who's saying, I have all these ideas. I, I want to choreograph. I want to do this, but I'm too scared to try. What would you say? 
I'm too scared of failing. Pra- practice makes perfect, man. Like mm. the more the more you do it, the 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 more you're gonna be brave. The like the more the more courage you're gonna like grow, and like you're gonna you're just gonna grow within yourself, and then. At some point, you you and only you yourself gotta like trust in yourself, trust in yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, if you feel like you want to write a song, if you want to like choreograph or whatever, whatever it is, um, it's easier said than done. But just go for it. Just do it. If you want to put it out there, put it out there. You don't even have to put it outside. No one has to see it. Just for yourself, mm. learn, grow for it. And when you feel when you feel like that's what you want to do, then do it. If mm. you don't want to do it. Leave it. It's that. I mean, I've seen that you've been part of um, Dream Girls. You've been part of Tina Turner. Currently, that's the musical you're doing, right? I do, I do Dream Girls. Uh, what did you do after Lion King? Oh yeah, hairspray, hairspray. Yes, it was hairspray, and then it was um, the Tina Fame. Turner now, right? Fame, Fame, and then now. Yeah. So having done all these massive productions, which yeah. are very big, um, all of them, probably none of them are bigger than Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> what? The incident, Baba. How? <laughs> yeah, look at you throwing shades. God damn it. Jeez. <laughs> so, how did you know that it was time for you to leave the Lion King, the Yellow Tent? And what have you learned since leaving? Would you do things differently or not? If I was to go back to Lion King? No. If, if we were to rewind time, would you still oh. do everything as you've done it? Yeah, because... I don't I don't believe in going back in time and then changing stuff and blah blah blah. I don't believe in that. That's just I don't want to say it's sad, but it's taking away all the other memories that you've made like because we grow from everything. You know what I mean? Mm. Why mm. do I want to go back and change it and not know what I know now? Exactly. Exactly. And so, and but how did you know that it was time to let go? of that chapter and did you know what was next for you at that moment we artists man we we often never know what's next we often never know what's next so but like i must say there was some kind of like st- stability when it comes to um work because again i'm not just narrow minded when you like when it comes to my 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 craft i don't i don't want to just be like i'm only doing musicals and that's it because mm. if that if that was uh if that uh, uh was to be the case then um then i would i would have i would have said to myself okay you have to stay otherwise you have nothing right so because because i do different stuff i i mm. i create I teach, I perform, I do my own things, you know what I mean? So it's just like, okay, now I'm here. I've been here for two years, I think, or three years. Yeah. It's time to move on. It's time to pursue my other goals. As you as you know, like with my event, the art venture, you know, like that, for instance, you know, so it's time to pursue stuff that I want to do and places Ooh. that I see, you know what I mean? I could, I could have done that by just playing the show every night, getting the money, mm. and by day I work on the different show, but no, because ah, mm. it's enough. Mm. You, gotta know when, no. uh, you gotta know when you're no longer happy. Exactly. And I think it's important to know when to let go. I think for me, I, at some point, very early on actually, I felt that I was like a bottle of champagne that has been shaken and it wants to release and yeah. I felt that I had so much to offer that yeah. the space was not allowing me. In fact, the country was not allowing me. I think yeah. if I was in an English country, I would probably yeah. still have done the show because yeah. for me, it was important that when I knock off the theater, I need yeah. to be doing other things. I need to be going to poetry shows, writing yeah. books, writing music. And I felt it was hard to do that in that space, you know? 
yeah. Maybe it was because I was not very good with the language. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a, it could be a language thing. That is that is, is for sure. Yeah. yeah. All That's right. Sure. Let's let's move on to this part um, because we're two African boys having a conversation about you know in the world uh, yeah. with audiences from everywhere. So I wrote this piece and it's titled Azania, and um, it's one of my <laughs> most. It's titled Azania Arise. So it's one of my favorite pieces. I will read it to you quickly. Thick, dark skin, flat, wide nose, dry, hard, dry, black afro, cracked feet and broken souls, smashed dreams and stolen identities. Those are my people. The smell of burnt tires has become the dark aroma choking the black child grasping for fresh air. My people. My people are stuck in tin homes, stripped naked by European heterocentric culture, reducing our humanity to that of an animal. Indoctrinated by the Western to hate all that is African, we have found demons in our own customs and have stopped passing down our own traditions. For we hate all that is us. I am found laughing. Laughing so loud that my laughter lingers long after my tears have hit the ground learning how to swim in the pool of my own sorrow. For this African child has forgotten how to sing his own song in his native language. This African child has forgotten who he is. Yeah. Bruh, this is not enough. We did so. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, wait, Sebastian, um, ask that question again. Ask that question again later. When we're oh, done. why did he ask? ask uh, you think do you think that, that the zone where you are living affects the process? All right, we'll speak about that just now. So when I was reading that, what went through your mind, what went through your heart, and what are your reflections on that? First, my reflection on that, bro, is like that you were crazy. You were, you were sick. Of, you were right for days, brother. You were right <laughs> Thank for days. That is like, <laughs> I, was, I was more enjoying the artistry than actually what it should tell me. <laughs> uh, I will read, I, I want to read the first, the, the top part again, just the beginning. Yeah. yeah. It says, Thick, dark skin, flat, wide nose, hard, dry afro, black feet yeah. and broken souls, smashed dreams and stolen identities. Those yeah. are my people. You know, we have a legacy. And I think sometimes us as black kids who are living in this day and age, uh, using technology, very privileged, we forget that for us to be us, to yeah. live off and be able to create and share. A lot of people who look like us were denied an opportunity to be us, to yeah. be like us. They were denied the opportunity to share their freedoms. So yeah. in this thing, I'm saying, well, I'm saying a lot of things, but everyone can interpret it in how they, whatever they want. But I wanted to ask you, um, I asked you before the importance of mm -hmm how you fuse uh, you, Africa into your dance. But I want to yeah. change that a step higher and say, besides the fact that when people see you, of course, they see a black person. So of course they see an African. How yeah. important is it for us as African, especially blacks to own and then to share, but being mindful that we're representing more than just ourselves. You are standing, Maya Angelou says this, she says, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000, you know? Ooh! And I've, I come as one, I stand as 10,000. And I've always said that whenever we enter a room, we enter with every black person that was denied an opportunity to enter that room. We enter with our uncles, with our ancestors, oh! with our, we enter the room with so much more. So, how important is it for us to be aware of that and to own it, knowing that this moment that we are having is backed up by the 10,000s 
that could not have this moment right now. Yo, this is, this is like, this was meant to happen, bro. Mm. Because last year, oh man, last year teaching, I was teaching like, I was teaching at this camp and also like several places. And I was teaching this, this piece called culture. Mm. Right. And it's, it's literally like super, like when I say cultural, like you know how we when we gyrate, yeah, it's hyped and everything, mm. but there's more depth to it. Like there is meaning to it, mm. you know. So there, like at, in, in, during the class, at some point, I, I felt like I felt like the students were just they were just doing it, and I was like, I stopped it. I said. Y'all got to take this serious because this is it's not just me. I'm giving you a part of my culture, a part of my, my you know. And this this happened. It's funny because this happened last year, you know. Mm. So, mm. Yo, and he was there. That is funny. This, this uh, Sebastian was there. He was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I was like, yo, this is a part of my culture. I'm bringing this to you. So let's take it. As you know, imagine yourself being in that environment. Mm. Imagine yourself being that person right now. You know, mm. so yeah, mm. it's, yeah. It, is, it is important, especially because like Afros become so commercial nowadays. Exactly, exactly. Commercial, which is fine. Everyone's got to make their money. Everyone's got to make yeah. their bread. You know, but there is more to it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's why, like, when I do it, if, I, if I'm doing it for fun, I'm doing it for fun. Like, that's yeah. what, that's, what, that I fo- I, that's why I also try to focus more on, like, the traditional Afro mm. stuff. Sometimes in one of my pieces, I actually used, <laughs> I actually used one Zulu movement, the kick. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it won't be <laughs> from the one by one. <laughs> listen, listen. Um, it's important. I mean, it's mm. funny because I had about it that way, but it's just like instincts. You know what I mean? Just, mm. just like it's mm. not. It's not. It's Stuff that you should take for granted. It's something exactly. it's spe- special. Exactly. And yeah. I think it's important for people, and I want to say this, especially for us Africans, art in Africa is very spiritual. You know, we don't just do art for just entertainment. Of course, we are being entertained and we enjoy and we dance and we've got the drum, but it's also in our art, we have our stories. We carry our yeah. stories, we put down our culture, and we also speaking about a self of identity within our culture. So I think yeah. that is important as Africans to be exposed to all the other styles of the world, but to always bring it back to who we are yeah. and then interpret it as an African yeah. would. So we, we're going to be child by time. Um, I noticed that we're going to be child yeah. by time. <laughs> we probably have like two minutes left or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was so much to say, but thank you for allowing me to have this conversation with you. You know, I would, I, I really appreciate and respect you as an artist. Uh, it's you've got a it's mutual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got such a big heart, and you carry your artistry very well. I wish you all the best, and keep doing those videos, especially the one you did with Java's music recently. That was yeah. just. Beautiful. <laughs> epic. Thank ep- you. Epic. Thank you very, <laughs> epic. Much. very much. Let's see if you can answer his question quickly. Do you think yeah. that the zone where you are living affects the process affects your the process? I think of your art. Of my art. The zone that I'm living, you mean like in Europe, right? Yeah. I mean it, it doesn't it does it affects my, my art, but in a good way. It's not like yeah. it's nothing. It's not in. It's not negative. It's it's in a good way. And mm. um, I'm oh, I'm. Anyways, like I always try to filter stuff that doesn't like the things that like are not good for me. I I mm. always try to filter it. So 
I try to take the best out of the like situation. So being out here, oh, definitely, it, it's it's affecting my art in a good way. And mm. of course, I take it where as well. And like when it comes to mindset, because sometimes you want to follow the trend, you want to be all trendy, exactly. and, but then exactly. you gotta put yourself again. Like, is this who I am? Yes or no? So, yeah. Yeah, and I mean it's important to play around, to experiment, to have fun, but at the same time to always come back to yourself. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, to everybody else out there, thank you for tuning in. We've seen some of our colleagues. Um, Pepe, Twa, uh, yeah. no, Monique. Uh, thank you guys for everyone that has tuned in to this live. Um, from me, Sipo Setu, tomorrow, same time at 9 p.m., I'll be having another international guest. Do join yeah. me. Let's continue these conversations. Dinepri, thank you so much. Everybody else, my book is thank available you. on Amazon. Let's do the yeah. right thing. <laughs> Guys, go get it. Go get it. It's a good book, man. So my brother, go get it. Go get it. Yeah. Piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> much, man. Don't forget to save this conversation, right? I will save it on my story. And yes. you can I will get it there. I'll get it there. All right. All right. <laughs> um, in right. conclusion, I think we've got like a few seconds. It's going yeah. to tell you. It's going to tell you soon. What do you want the world to know? Quickly. The world should know that Huh? Anything from your heart to the world. Oh, we're oh, the world should know that we are all loved. Indeed. Indeed. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Man, I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night. All right. Man, all right. I will you. wait for you to log out because <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> I'm all going to a rehearsals for a music video, so I'm a peace, bro. Peace, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you.